VOA News. I'm Christopher Cruz reporting. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan says President Trump has asked for his country's help in securing a peace agreement in Afghanistan. He said Monday he'd received a letter from Trump to inform him that the U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan Reconciliation is traveling to Pakistan this week for further negotiations. The casket of former President George H.W. Bush now lies in the U.S. Capitol. He will lie in state there beginning tonight and into Wednesday. Mr. Bush died late Friday in Texas at the age of 94. Associated Press correspondent Sagar Magani reports. The former president's remains will travel here from his beloved Houston, where Barbara Kenny was among those remembering him at the church George H.W. and Barbara Bush attended. Just a very caring man who was always willing to help others. His body will lie in state in the Capitol Rotunda starting this evening, where the public's invited to celebrate his life. A life of honor, a life of honesty. Colin Powell. Powell, who was his top military advisor, telling ABC's This Week President Bush was a patriot in war and peace. The U.S.-led coalition fighting the Islamic State has targeted and killed a senior leader of the group in Syria who was linked to the murder of an American citizen. A Pentagon spokesman told The Voice of America Monday that coalition forces killed Abu, Ul, uh, Abu al-Umarayan and several other Islamic State members during a precision strike on Sunday in the Badaya district, a desert. The terrorist was directly involved with executing several IS prisoners. IS controls just 1% of the territory it once held in Iraq and Syria. The U.S.-led coalition is still working with local partners to push the group out of its last stronghold. This is VOA News. President Trump boasted Monday of his, quote, very strong and personal relationship with Chinese President Xi Jinping. He declared a new U.S.-China trade deal would immediately allow American farmers to sell more of their products to Beijing. Stock markets in Asia and Europe jumped sharply after the two reached an agreement. U.S. stock indices also opened sharply higher in New York at the start of a new work week. The U.S. Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. said Monday it has found what it calls compelling evidence of genocide in Myanmar against the Muslim Rohingya minority. It called on the United States government and international governments to hold the Burmese military accountable. Hungary's Central European University, founded by the billionaire George Soros, announced Monday it had been forced out of the country. The head of the university in a statement called the action an arbitrary eviction. The university had been set up in 1991. It's been in legal limbo for more than a year since Hungary changed higher education laws regulating foreign universities. The Vatican renewing a call for a two-state solution to the conflict in the Middle East. Associated Press correspondent Walter Ratliff reports. Following a visit by Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas, the Vatican has reaffirmed its long-standing call for a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Abbas met with Pope Francis and the Vatican foreign minister. The Vatican said the talks focused on efforts to reactivate the peace process and renew a commitment from the international community. It was the first visit by Abbas since the U.S. transferred its embassy and recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital. I'm Walter Ratliff. The U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres is warning that the world is, quote, in deep trouble with climate change. He spoke Monday at the opening of two weeks of climate talks in Poland. He said it's the most important gathering on climate change since the Paris Agreement was signed in 2015. Signatories to the agreement pledged to cut greenhouse gas emissions and limit the rise in global temperatures to less than 2 degrees Celsius by 2030. Three new crew members arrived Monday at the International Space Station. They'll begin a a six-and-a-half-month mission at the orbiting laboratory. NASA astronaut Anne McLean, David St. Jacques of the Canadian Space Agency, and Oleg Kononenko of the Russian space agency Roscosmos blasted off in a Soyuz MS-11 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. They arrived at the International Space Station about six hours later. You can find more on these and other late-breaking and developing stories from around the world, around the clock, at voanews.com and on the VOA News mobile app. I'm Christopher Cruz, VOA News.